Praise the Lord and welcome to Get Up, Get Out and Get Blessed. Call up a friend and call up a neighbor and tell them it's time to get up, get out and get blessed. Without any further ado, let us commit this telecast into the hands of the Lord. Praise God. Father, this afternoon, I give you thanks and praise, Lord, for this wonderful privilege whereby I could share the word of God with my fellow Guyanese. Father, this afternoon, I die to self. I take no glory, but I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, my friends, if you've now tuned in, the topic this afternoon is real faith. And the text is taken from the scripture that most of us know, Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 1. And it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, beloved, is the confident assurance. I'm breaking it down. Faith is the confident assurance of what we hope for and the proof of things we cannot see. Yes, it's things what we hope for, but it's the proof of things. You see, we hope for things, but we have not seen it manifested as yet. But when you exercise faith, you have that assurance. You have that assurance that God will see you through. So when you exercise, because many persons in the Bible exercise Abraham, all those persons exercise faith, things they did not see. But it came to pass. So today you may be hoping for something. But I want to tell you have faith. Have faith in God. Not faith in people. Have faith in God. As the songs where we sing the song. Have faith in God for he answers. Have faith in God. Someday have faith in man. A man can't answer you. Because man got a problem to himself. But God is the one. The creator of the universe. Have faith in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, my friends, real faith. Now, our fight is a faith fight. Yes, our fight is a faith fight. And Ephesians 6 declares that Ephesians 6 verse 12, we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 12. If you've now tuned in, my friends, the topic this afternoon is real faith. And our fight is a faith fighter. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of the world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And scripture reference for that is Ephesians 6 verse 12. But I can assure you, Romans 8, 37 declares, but we are what? More than conquerors through Christ Jesus, more than conquerors, true Christ Jesus. And look what the scripture reads, more than conquerors. We're not only conquerors, we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So that will build you up. That will give you hope. Because if you're losing faith today, trust in God. Because a child of God is more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. When we look at the stories in the Bible, like Peter at the gate of the temple, we say, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Yes, when they told the man at the gate, in the name of Jesus, not in the name of me, or in the name of a friend or what, is in the name of Jesus. 
When we pray, we got to use the, the words we believe in the name of Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There's deliverance in the name. Yes, you could pray, but in the name of Jesus. And when that man was there, they said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Also, Paul, when he cast the demon out of the insane woman, we say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. That's what he said. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. It's the spirit behind it. Many persons are behaving funny. Some persons are insane. Some persons are drug addicts and all of that. It's the spirit behind it. It's the spirit we got to deal with. The demon spirit that has inhabited the person's body, physical body. That's why Paul, when he cast out the demon of the insane woman, he said, not in his name, he said, in the name of Jesus. Amen? I command you to come out of her. We should thank the Lord for his authority. Yes, when you use the name of Jesus, as believers today, as a believer, my friend, you may be watching this. Do you use your authority in situations? Or you allow the devil to make a mess out of your life. Sometimes you got to get radical. Because the word of God said he has given us authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. We only say that, but do we act it out? Faith is action. Real faith is action. Putting it into practice. We go to church, yes. We hear the word and we say hallelujah. They said that. And when we go home and the situation hits you, do you use your faith? Huh? Do you use your faith? My friends, this is the season where God is looking at us. And many of us, all of us as a matter of fact, have a situation. And it's only God could help us in this season. It's only God. Amen? And we got to use our authority. The unbeliever may not know Jesus. But when you know Jesus, that's why as a believer, our job is to tell others about Jesus and to tell others what Jesus has done for us and what he's doing in and through our lives. Amen. Amen. Now, you may be watching this telecast this afternoon. You may be sick in body. You may be having cancer. You may be having hypertension. You may be having HIV AIDS. You may be having some sort of sickness. And you're watching this telecast this afternoon. First, you have to believe. As the song said, only believe. All things are possible. And you have to believe in the Lord Jesus first. That Jesus Christ died for your sins. You see, we could pray, yes. But are you willing to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And then follow him. And then you will be able to experience. Because the Bible said, he promised above all things that we may prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospered. Today, if you go to the hospital right now, every section full. Every section pack up. You go to PhD, every, I want to know how many persons sick. You go to the other private hospitals, every section pack up. Turn to Jesus. He bore 39 stripes. Jesus Christ died on the cross of me and you. He took 39 stripes. That's why we have to pray in the name of Jesus and we have to give our life. You can't say in the name of Jesus and you know Christ. You got to know him. You have to establish an intimate relationship with God through Christ Jesus. And then you will experience the benefits of healing, deliverance, because the Bible says, God promised above all things that we may prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. Amen? So you may be watching this day, but before I conclude, I will lead you to Christ so that you have that firm belief and you will be able to keep your healing and your deliverance. Right? The Bible says, surely he bore our griefs, that's our sicknesses and our disease, and he carried our sorrows. That is our pains. So once you believe, because only believe all things are possible. We sing that song. and it's about, Only believe, the Bible says that all things are possible to him that believe. 
And if we believe, we could always declare, with his stripes, we are healed. Today, if you're sick, you have to confess that, the word of God, instead of confessing the pain and the problem. Look to the problem solver. Don't look at the... Many persons are losing their focus and looking at the problem. But look at the problem solver. Look, confess Jesus instead of confessing your pain. He bore the pain. Confess your healing. Confess your healing instead of confessing your disease. He bore that disease. You see, if you have the understanding, and the only way you can have the understanding is by reading the word of God. And the Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. You hear the word of God, you read it too, and you apply it to your lives. You can't be going to church and you're hearing the word. When you go home, you don't got a Bible. You don't got a Bible at all. You don't have a Bible. And I'm personally, I don't believe in, we have technology now with a cell phone and the, and the Bible is on it. But how many times you could be studying your Bible on the cell phone where your phone ringing and your friends calling you and some cell phones, all sorts of things are on the cell phone. But the Bible is God's infallible truth. You don't have talk name for the Bible. You don't have nobody husband calling you. You don't have no friend calling you and putting all sorts of gossip in your ears. The Bible is God's infallible truth. But people are saying it's technology and all of that. But you use the Bible and you're the person and the person, yes. But when they finish, you're going to call in somebody and they discuss, oh no, get a Bible. The cheapest Bible is $1,500. And if you want a bold print, well, you got to make some investment. And then as a believer, you must have a concordance. How could you grow? How could you grow? How could you understand what you're reading? Hallelujah. Although what you read is the Holy Spirit gives you the understanding. But still, you could look at the concordance too. And you will develop yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. So, the real faith always hold fast to the confession of the word of God. Amen. Now, many have no time to be taught the word. Many persons go to church, yes. They go to church for the deliverance service. And they go to church on Sunday sometimes. Because some people only go for deliverance service alone. And Sunday, I ain't got time, I got clothes to wash and all of that. You got to be there to hear the word. How could you exercise your faith? Many don't want to come to Bible study. When it's Bible study, it's a small handful of people. Nobody. Ain't come. So how your faith could be strengthened? Many have no time to be taught the word. They have no interest in the Bible. Yeah, some people, got, some people got a Bible, throw over on side. Sometimes when you go to a house and you ask them, turn to this book in the Bible, Ephesians, Galatians. Ask the way you turn to the Old Testament, Nehemiah and Zechariah. Oh, Lord, sister, where are they? Well, I would tell them, please look at your, your um, the index, the, um, the contents. Look at the contents. Turn to the front of the Bible. Turn to the front of the Bible, and you'll be able to find what you're looking for to ease the shame. Turn to the front of the Bible, and you will be able to ease your shame when you, when, when you, when you look through, and you get the, how, the, how the books for, come, right? Amen. Because people, don't, if you practice reading your Bible, you're going to understand. I see some people got a brand new Bible for years. That means they don't use it. Because if you are using your Bible... The Bible will be all kinds of things on the line, and, and you got things that you get this for you on the line. Amen. So people don't have no interest in the Bible. They have no desire for the word. All they want is healing and deliverance for themselves. Yes. They don't care about the Bible. I can go to church tomorrow. I can go to the deliverance service, and I can get healed, and I can, the pastor can pray for me, and all of that. But when you go home, would you be able to keep your healing? Because you ain't got the word. We pray for them, yes, as pastors, and they are healed. In a little while, they return and say, I cannot understand it. That healing did not last. All the symptoms came back. What happened? Where is the difficulty? Here where it lies. It lies in this. They had no faith in the word of God. They knew nothing about the word as far as healing was concerned. Their faith was 
in the person who prayed for them, not in God's word. The Bible declares if you're sick, by his stripes you are healed. You see, if you know the word of God now, you'll be able to turn to the word of God. And when you turn to the word of God, you'll be able to read the word of God. And my friends today, if you don't understand, you know, I have a, I have made a, um, uh, watch, watch what you call it again, a, 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 a little reference here about how to get wisdom. You read the Bible, you get knowledge, right? With the help of the Holy Spirit, you get the understanding. And when you get knowledge plus on a formula, when you get knowledge plus understanding, what you get? Wisdom. You become a wise person. Knowledge, yes, the whole Bible is here, but without the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot understand the Bible. That's why you got to give yourself to the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to fill you. Be filled, and then you'll understand the Bible too. Because the big words, we says, to clear the big words. I don't understand. They cook all the words, and the words too hard, and all that. Ask God to help you. The Holy Spirit will help you. And if you don't know to read, there are many persons in churches who are teachers and all of that. Get connected. Let the church may have a class to teach people to read. They have many people with gifts, the gifts of teaching people how to read and write. So when you come in, many pastors, they know to read and write. And when they join and connect, connect to God through Jesus, they began to understand the Bible. Amen? So every time you confess weakness and failure, you magnify the adversary above the Father. You destroy your own confidence in God's word. Amen? You destroy it. So my friend this afternoon, I want to tell you, get a Bible. Get connected. Get to know Jesus personally through his word. When you know that by his stripes you are healed, as well as you know that two plus two are four, the enemy will have no power over you. You will simply laugh at him and say, Satan, you know you have been defeated. In Jesus' name, I command you to leave my body. And right away, Satan got to flee. Because you said in Je you use your authority. In Jesus' name, I command you to leave my body. Many whose healings come through the faith of others lose their healing. Simply because they have no knowledge of their rights. As set forth in God's word. Yes, many people know when you read God's word, you know your rights. God's word, the Bible, is God's infallible truth. It's a manual for you to know your rights. Read your Bible and be inspired by God. Because the pastor can't do everything. You got to do something too. Amen? David says, forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all our iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Psalm 103. Psalm 103, verse 2 and 3. My friends, this afternoon, physical healing is one of the benefits of Christ. Your confession about that is your faith talking. Yes, you got to speak faith. Faith is action. So my friends, this afternoon, the topic is real faith. And in this season in Guyana, we really have to exercise real faith. Get to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Get connected to a Bible-believing church that preaches and teaches the truth and lives the truth too. And believers, get connected. Read your Bible. Read your Bible more and more. Spend time. Spend quality time so that you could be an effective witness. Today when we ask people to go on the witness, they don't want to go. Because people know them. People know the lifestyle. But with God, once you connect to God, God will back you. God will clean you up. And make you the person he wants you to be. Sickness is of the devil. Weaknesses of the devil, the sea diseases of the devil, 
troubles are from the devil. As long as you are praising Satan's works, you cannot expect to maintain your victory. Every time you're sick, oh God, Satan says, okay, you just be your own Satan. And sometimes too, you know why so many persons are sick? Are you sticking to the right diet? Are you, you see, you got to be wise, man. You got to be wise. Stick to the right diet. Live a life of obedience to God. Let your bodies be the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Word of God said, let the, your body be the temple. Some of us use our bodies with all kinds of things. Fornication, adultery, then we vex. When we ain't getting healed. So I tell you, when some of people get healed, they go back in the world. Where the devil comes back seven times worse. And then they come in church crying and all of that. Come on, be friends. Come on, believers. Come on. The song says, if I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right, I know the Lord will have his way in me. Praise God. So my friend, this afternoon, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I present this opportunity to you this afternoon to accept him as Lord and Savior. All you have to repeat is this prayer of repentance. Say, Lord Jesus, I open my heart and I accept you as Lord of my life. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. But Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ was crucified for my sins. He died and he was buried and he rose again on the third day. This afternoon, I believe that he died. He was crucified and was buried for me. And I open my heart to accept him as Lord and Savior. Amen. Yes, just like that, a simple prayer. Now you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. This afternoon is your spiritual birthday because now you're born again spiritually. You have the ABC to salvation. A, you acknowledge that you are a sinner. You believe in the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says, see, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and is willing to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this afternoon, I pray a prayer of assurance for you now because you've made that decision and you now have to get connected. You have to connect to collect. So you get connected to a Bible-believing church where they put you in converts class and they'll teach you the essentials of Christian living. If you don't, if you want help, contact me on the numbers that are listed on the screen. Amen? And I will assist you in getting to grow spiritually. Amen. Now I'm going to pray a prayer of assurance for you. Lord Jesus, this afternoon I thank you for all those who are watching this telecast, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that they will be able to continue in their walk with Christ because you're able to save and you're able to keep. Father, I thank you for them, and I apply the blood of Jesus over their minds, their bodies, their souls, and their spirits. And I pray, God, that they will have testimonies about getting to know you as Lord and Savior. Praise God. So this afternoon is your spirit. And if you're watching this telecast this afternoon and you have a sickness, I just want you to stretch forth your hands so that I could pray with you and declare healing because you've just believed in Christ. So now you have authority to use it. All you have to do is to get to the word of God and read. And if you don't understand, you could call me up and I could share the word of God with you. Praise God. Those who are sick this afternoon, as I pray this afternoon, stretch forth your hands to the, teleca to the TV. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the person who's watching. And right now I speak healing into their bodies because your word said healing is the children's bread. The word of God said Jesus Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. I declare healing to the one watching here this afternoon. You are healed because Jesus Christ bore the 39 stripes for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friends, my time is up. But before I go, I just want to encourage you. When you have faith, listen carefully. When you have faith, you no longer moan or groan. 
you praise and rejoice. Faith talks positively. Here it is. Faith talks positively. Faith sings joyfully. Faith prays confidently. Are you doing that? Are you rejoicing? Or is your talk positive? Because we only some people only talk positively in church. And when it hit them home, oh God, girl, the pains and the devil on my back all the nonsense. The devil can't be on my back because Jesus Christ is Lord. And I say, get thee behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. He was the authority. Faith sings joyfully. Many persons in church, when it's time for praise and worship, they can't praise because the problem's bugging them down. They can't praise. You got to rejoice and shake it off. Like they say, shake the devil off. Yes, yeah, shake the devil off. Rejoice. You win the war by praise and thanks. It's a spiritual war, as I said earlier. It's spiritual war. The fight is a fight of faith. Sometimes, many times I sing and I don't have a cent in my pocket. I didn't even know when I got food to go home when I was a younger Christian too. And God has brought me a mighty long way. And I always, people say I'm mad. And they say that people even say, oh, okay, she's praised like she's headed good. But I know why I praise God. Because I know what he has done for me. Where he has brought me from. Where he has me today. And where he's taken me. And faith Praise confidently. I am confident of this very thing, that he who began to work is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So write this down. Faith talks positively. Faith sings joyfully. And faith prays confidently. Amen. Praise God. My time is up. And thanks for yours. And the next telecast will be aired on March the 3rd. The first Sunday in March. It was a pleasure. Fellow Guyanese, it was a pleasure sharing with you this afternoon. I want to tell you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Goodbye. See you next time. Praise God. Oh,